Hi, my name is Leah, and in this video, I'm going to tell you my story. Before I start this new chapter of my life, I want to clean the slate and get things off my shoulders. I feel like I owe that to myself, to those who love me, and to those who have supported me over the years. My story has been misconstrued, exploited, sensationalized, but now I'm taking my narrative back and I'm going to tell you my story. I just want to warn the viewers that some of the topics I'm going to speak about can be quite dark and might be triggering for some viewers. I've always had a passion for life and a taste for freedom. When I was 17, I moved to Los Angeles alone to pursue my career. I worked hard and focused on my passions, but I was living in a whole other world when the sun went down. I was drinking, using drugs, and partying almost every night. My lifestyle became more dangerous as the years passed. I was truly on a collision course. Life isn't always easy, I just never knew it could be so hard. I could count on my fingers the amount of people I could trust, but I was young and naive. I was in a relationship with someone who I thought I loved, but even that changed when he put his hands on me and strangled me. I was so young, I didn't know what to do or how to speak up, so I stayed quiet. I don't think I ever told anyone. There was pain and loneliness in my life that not even drugs could fix. So when I was 18, I had my first suicide attempt. I was taken to the hospital and then I went back home to San Diego. I got back on my feet after some months of group therapy with other kids who felt the same as me. Eventually, I went back to LA because I booked a role in a series. It didn't take long to fall back into my crazy lifestyle and dangerous path. I tried my best to keep all that was going on in my private life hidden but it was getting harder and harder. This story is so hard to tell because I have so many beautiful memories, but the other half of me was finding life so painful and overwhelming. When I was 19, I was signed to Capitol Records. I partied, I filmed, I drank until I blacked out. I made music, I smoked weed past my boundaries. I wrote poetry, I experimented with drugs and love, but I worked hard for what I wanted. Then again, who knows what they want when they're just 19 years old. When my song DNA came out and I had felt like I had finally told an honest and true story of my life, I was able to truly connect with people all over the world. My career was moving in the right direction, but I was losing control. When I was 20, I got into a car accident and I'm lucky to be alive. It was a scary moment that should have changed the way I was living, but I still didn't get the message. After that, I started to feel strange mentally and would feel very depressed and have so much anxiety. I don't know if the car accident trauma correlates with how I was feeling, but it was immediately after that that life started to change drastically. I tried to focus on my music, making art and films, but it finally became too much and I was ending up in hospitals due to my poor mental health. The worst part was spending time in psychiatric wards due to falling into drug-induced psychosis. Drug-induced psychosis, for those of you that don't know, is awful. Your reality warps. You can hallucinate for days, weeks, and sometimes for the rest of your life. You can hear voices, and they can tell you to do things to yourself or others that you don't want to do. I felt lost and alone. When I was 21, I got out of rehab for the first time. I left LA and moved to Ocean Beach, San Diego. I lived near the water so I could hear the waves crashing when I woke up and went to sleep. Before I knew it, I had relapsed and I stayed that way. I thought I had fallen in love again, but in reality, it was much worse. He became abusive in every sense of the word. He would physically abuse me until I had bruises on my neck from strangulation and bruises on my body. He took advantage of the money I had made. Verbally, he would take his anger out on me and mentally and psychologically, I was driven into what felt like insanity. I was calling the police because it was so bad, but I decided I didn't want to press charges because I was too afraid of him. During this time, I received a call and was told that Capitol Records was dropping me and my managers were no longer working with me. All the work I had put in over the years had fallen to pieces and nobody wanted anything to do with me. Now it's 2019 and I had gone off the deep end. I didn't understand why my abuser wouldn't leave my life and why I would always take him back in after what he did to me. It was an endless cycle. When I was alone, which was quite a lot, I began making Instagram lives while I was drunk and high and how I acted was the downfall of all I had worked for in my life. 
All it was was a cry for help and people did try to help, but nobody knew I was being abused and my story got twisted and I was still all alone. During this time, I was going out a lot and getting into a lot of trouble to the point where I had the cops called on me more than once. I went to jail a couple of times during 2019 and they were awful experiences. Everything was a mess. I reached a point where I just couldn't take it anymore. So I decided to try and get sober again and lived in a sober living for five months. I made my song Moonflower, which was about the abuse and how I was wrapped up during the day and would bloom at night. I hoped someone would hear the lyrics and possibly understand what was going on with me and maybe it would help them too. Soon after this, my producer at the time took me to the studio one day all alone. He knew I was early and fragile in my sobriety, but he encouraged me to drink and I did to the point of intoxication. He then tried to take advantage of me. He kissed me without permission and I couldn't get out of the situation and I was scared something more would happen if I didn't reach out for help. So I did an Instagram live and he was caught. However, it did cause further damage to what people thought of me and again was misconstrued publicly. After that, I was living like a nomad, hotel to Airbnb, but I was going nowhere and living with minimal funds. I was merely existing in a city that didn't have anything for me. Until January of 2020 came along and I met someone who changed my life forever. It was a complicated relationship and we were using heavily to the point where I became sick during this time and fell into psychosis again. I had to be taken to the psychiatric hospital for a month. When I got out of the hospital, my addiction persisted. On July 18th, 2020, I woke up to the police pounding on our door. I reached over for him, but he wasn't there. In that moment, I knew something terrible happened. I answered the door and the police told me that he had committed suicide. I never got to say my goodbyes. Nobody did. Losing him is one of the hardest realities I've ever had to face. I know he's at peace now, but I still miss him. When he passed, I blacked out for a few days. When I woke up, I was in a rehab facility, but end up, I ended up in the hospital shortly after. I then went to two more rehabs that kicked me out because of my reckless behavior. I was outside of a rehab on the street with a suitcase and I had nowhere to go, so I called my friend Charlotte. She came immediately and brought me to her apartment where her family lived with her. Charlotte said, you're going to live with us and I'm going to get you sober. So I did live with them in the apartment. I thought it was the kindest thing anyone had done for me in a long time. I slept on her couch and I loved being surrounded by so much love. I was sober, but I relapsed periodically, but I was always forgiven and given support and another chance. I'm so blessed for that chapter of my life and it truly saved my life and gave me a foundation to grow again. I really can't believe I'm still here on this planet, alive and coherent. I've had a lot of people tell me I'm glad that you're alive because the way I was living I shouldn't be, but I'm happy I am. I tried almost every single drug you can think of and lost everything I had. I've been to jail, psych wards, and rehabs. I've slept on the street. And now I can tell you that the one thing that saved me was love, real love. That's why I'm here, because love is so powerful. Love is the reason I'm alive. Now as I come to the end of my story, I want you to know that it's not the end, but the beginning of something beautiful. I met someone special. His name is Charlie and I am happily in love. We decided to move to England to a quaint town with lots of land. I paint a lot, I make music, I write and I'm sober. So far it's 10 months and I hope to get a year. I've never felt so free. I have my first new song out in a while on Friday and I'm excited to be doing what I love again. Life is a journey filled with dreams and mystery. I'm at a point now where I can say everything happens for a reason, and I'm so happy to be alive today to tell you my story. Whatever path you're on, I hope it's a beautiful one, and if you aren't happy where you are, don't be afraid to ask for help and change directions. I just wanted to tell my story and maybe be understood a little more. I know that hurt people hurt people, and I'm sorry if I have hurt anyone on this journey. It was never my intention. I'm so grateful for my friends and family who have helped me throughout the years, and I want to say thank you for being there through everything. And to my fans, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you for caring. In the description, I'm going to leave some links and numbers and resources for anybody who is struggling with any of the topics I spoke about. Be strong, and don't be afraid to ask for help. All my love, Leah.